NVIDIA GPUs give you the features and performance you require to develop today's cutting-edge games. We are also here for the development community, putting the best debuggers and profilers into your arsenal to enable you to attack the toughest bugs and performance problems. These upcoming scenarios will guide you on how to use Insight graphics and Insight systems to produce your most successful title yet. In this example, we have a single frame from the Justice RTX tech demo from our partners at NetEase. In this application, they use ray tracing for reflections, shadows, and caustics to produce amazing visuals. To start analyzing the acceleration structure, navigate to one of the dispatch rays calls by using the filtering capability in the events view. From there, select the link to the acceleration structure from the RT tab in the API inspector. When you first enter the acceleration structure viewer, you are greeted with a visualization panel in the middle showing the geometry in the structure. On the left hand side is a table of each element of the acceleration structure and allows you to enable and disable sections of that structure. On the right side you see the camera controls and some simple visualization experiments you can do to ensure that you have the construction flag set correctly for your build ray tracing acceleration structure call. Using these experiments, we can already detect something is wrong that may impact performance. Right now, all 1500 pieces of geometry are not marked with the opaque flag. This means that as the rays hit the geometry, additional rays will be generated, causing unnecessary work. In this particular case, if we simply set this flag correctly to declare that all the geometry is opaque, we save 0.11 milliseconds in rendering time. Note that the automated analysis section of the GPU trace feature will point out this optimization if it detects the situation. One of the new features of the acceleration structure viewer is the ability to visualize where the bounding values overlap in the scene. To check this in your scene, simply press the instance heat map button in the lower left corner of the dialog. You will see a heat map that shows where any of the bottom level acceleration structures or BLASs overlap in space. This is important because it causes additional traversal time to enter each one of the BLASs, hurting your overall ray tracing performance. In this case, we wound up merging all of the geometry into a single BLAS and had about a one millisecond decrease in frame time. Insight Graphics has powerful profiling capabilities built right into the tool. From full pipeline profiling available in GPU Trace and the Range Profiler, to in-depth shader unit stall information in the shader profiler, Insight Graphics has what you need to find and fix the performance limiters in your application. In this scenario, we have a ray trace scene that isn't performing as we expected it to. Our trace rays marker section is taking about 5.3 milliseconds, and we think that is excessive for the work we are trying to perform. In GPU Trace, we can use the automated analysis button to understand where our performance is going. Automated analysis utilizes the same rule-based methodology that the NVIDIA Developer Technology Group uses to optimize AAA games on a daily basis. The automated analysis engine categorizes the problems that it finds based on the potential speedup you will achieve if the problem indicated is fixed. In this case, the overview section is telling us that we are VRAM limited, which is our first clue to what is happening with the performance. Something is accessing the VRAM and limiting our performance. Below that, it indicates our warps are stalled due to long scoreboard L1 accesses, which can be from the texture unit, global or local stores, etc. The second tab indicates that warp occupancy is an issue. This is going to be common for shaders that use a large number of registers or local memory and reduces the number of warps that are available to issue instructions for. In this case, it is the CS or compute shader register count that is the limiter. The third tab indicates that SM warp latency is a problem, which is closely related to the warp occupancy, because when a given warp has to stall due to waiting on a value to be loaded from a texture or a longer math operation, you want additional warps available to be scheduled in its place. Once we start to drill down into the warp latency, it again tells us that there are a large number of long scoreboard stalls. Long scoreboard indicates that the threads in the warp are spending a lot of time waiting for the texture unit to return a value that was sampled. The analysis text also points us to the shader profiler to help us understand exactly where the largest stalls are occurring in our source code. To run the shader profiler, start the frame profiler activity in Insight Graphics and capture the frame from the same scene that you used in GPU Trace. 
From there, you can right-click on the entry in the Events view or the Scrubber and select Profile Shaders. This will run an experiment where we periodically sample the program counter and the warp instruction issue status, noting if there was an instruction issued or any reason for a stall on that clock cycle. Once in the Shader Profiler, you will see two main sections. On the top, it will show you the shaders with the most stalls during the sampling experiment. This is an indicator of some of your more expensive shaders, either in sheer amount of time and or in frequency of use. Below that is a hotspot indicator for the individual lines of shader source that have the largest number of samples. In this case, we have one line that has a large number of long scoreboard stalls, which matches the problem that GPU Trace told us about earlier. If we click on that line, we can open the source code for the shader and we can see that we are indeed sampling from a texture multiple times. However, the issue is that we are always sampling from the highest MIP level, which can impact our cache coherency and her performance. When you use ray tracing, the texture unit isn't able to automatically determine what MIP level to use as in a rasterization based engine. Therefore, you have to calculate the appropriate MIP level. There are some papers on the internet, including from the NVIDIA Developer Technology Group, on determining the proper texture level of detail to use when ray tracing. For this example, we will simply choose MIP level 5 as a proxy for what the performance delta might be. We could do this by clicking the button in the upper right corner of the shader profiler and make the edit live, but in this case, we will make the edit offline and rerun GPU trace to see what the performance delta is. Here is the resulting run of GPU trace after editing the shader to use a different MIP map level. We can see that we went from 5.3 milliseconds to 2.48 milliseconds for the ray tracing pass, which is a nice improvement. We can also see that, for this section, our top limiter is no longer the VRAM unit, but SM warp occupancy, which has gone from 40.4% to 31.8%. SM warp latency is also still there, however, it has gone from 20.3% to 6.4%. One of the big challenges with developing games using modern APIs like D3D12 and Vulkan is the level of responsibility the developer has to ensure that the GPU is properly set up for each rendering pass. Resource hazards, bad synchronization, and improperly set up shader bind tables are just a few of the mistakes that can cause a GPU exception and ruin what was supposed to be a great day of coding for some new features. Insight Aftermath is a tool that will help you track down those GPU exceptions and resulting lost device errors. When you hit an exception, it can save out a GPU dump file that contains the state of the GPU when the problem happened. There are two main ways to use the tool. First, you can start the Aftermath monitor locally on your system, point it at your executable, set the directories you want to save the results into, and run your game until the GPU exception happens. Second, you can integrate the Ensite Aftermath SDK into your application. This allows you to have finer control over the Aftermath settings, inject your own markers or breadcrumbs to help narrow down the portion of the frame the error occurred in, and save off the GPU dump and related files in the best way for your use case. This can also be used to collect GPU dump files in shipping applications, however the markers introduce too much CPU overhead to be used in the field, so don't enable those in your shipping game. Once you initialize Aftermath and set up the callbacks necessary to handle the data, you are ready to save the results to disk, push it to a file server, or to the cloud. Once you have a GPU dump file, you can open it in Insight Graphics to better understand the reason for the GPU exception. In this case, there was an MMU fault caused by accessing a null pointer in a compute shader. With Insight Aftermath 2022.2, you can now see exactly what warps hit the exception via the faulted warps list. The table entry indicates an MMU fault error with additional information about the potential causes for this issue. If you double click on the faulted warp, you can see the source code at the location of the exception. In this simple example, we accessed a zero adder pointer, which was zero or null in the uniform buffer object, triggering the MMU fault. Sometimes you find yourself optimizing away at your shader code but the performance issues you are seeing just don't improve. This is usually a sign that the problem is somewhere else in the system, either in the host side code or in the connection and sync between the system's components. Insight Systems is the perfect tool to help you detect these sorts of problems. Let's have a look at a report captured from an application that has a system-wide issue. 
Putting various parts of the system on the same timeline makes it easy to notice patterns and problems from a bird's eye view. Here we can see this application has gaps in its CPU utilization as well as its SM and GR active metrics. This means neither the CPU nor the GPU's computational power is the main limiter on our performance. This can sometimes mean that the application is transfer bound, but we see here that the PCIe bandwidth metric is fairly low and definitely never exhausted. Another thing that can only be seen by putting all these metrics on one timeline is that the gaps in the CPU work align with the GPU being busy and vice versa. This means that instead of parallelizing our work between the CPU and the GPU, the work is being performed sequentially. Let's look a bit more into these exchanges. Looking at our game process, we can see a few things to note. The CPU and GPU frame indices are aligned with one another almost exactly. In a healthy application, while the GPU is rendering a frame, the CPU would already be working one or two frames ahead. The transfer queue, which should be parallelizing transfer operations with the graphics rendering, is never working in parallel to the graphics queue. The main thread is constantly blocked, and the Vulkan API is constantly performing VK wait for fences. All of this evidence points towards excessive synchronization, which is preventing the game from properly rendering the graphics as fast as it can. Probably some testing code left in, or some overzealous attempt at making sure data transfers are complete. We can inspect the thread's call stacks to find out exactly where in the game's code the problem happened and remove it. Having found and fixed the issue, we can now capture a new report and see that all the problems we saw are now gone. The GPU no longer has gaps in its busy metrics. The CPU is now about two frames ahead in its rendering. The transfer queue is working in parallel to the graphics queue. And the main thread is only waiting on fences when needed rather than all the time. At this point, the main limiter on the application's performance is the GPU. So if we want to improve it further, we can take it back into Insight Graphics to further refine the efficiency of our GPU workloads. NVIDIA is committed to Vulkan developers by providing day one support for the latest API features in Insight Graphics and Insight Systems. For instance, Insight Systems recently added support for the Vulkan video extensions to enable profiling of your applications that use video encoding and decoding. Thank you for joining us for this demo of some of the new features available in Insight Graphics and Insight Systems. For more information about these and other tools, as well as links to download the latest versions, check out developer.nvidia.com slash tools overview.